<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can easily add more games to your PlayStation Classic utilizing Bleem Sync. Now, the previous big modification for this was GPG Hacks, and if you have been around the channel, you might have seen that I did a video on that, but I did take it down. Reason being for that is that it's now recommended to use Bleem Sync, and on top of that, GPG Hacks has actually been removed, so you can only uninstall it now if you go there. So either way, if you have GPG Hacks, it's recommended to move over to Bleem Sync, and if you have not modified your system yet, you can do so using this tutorial from scratch. Now one thing to keep in mind is that this will allow you to put more games onto your system, but you cannot add them directly here unfortunately. Essentially what this will do is once you have the modification up and running, when you boot it up with the modification, you will only have the games you have added. And when you boot up the system without the modification, it will go back to these original 20. Now what you'll need to do is, of course, first you will need a PlayStation Classic. You're going to need a flash drive of some kind. I'm personally using a Kingston Data Traveler 8GB USB 2.0 flash drive. I recommend using a USB 2.0 drive because USB 3.0 hasn't been reported to work very well. And of course you're going to need your games as well. Now once you have everything sorted, go ahead move over to your PC and I'm going to show you how to set this up and how to download everything you will need. So if you go to the links down in the description, I'm going to have the repo link for Bleem Sync. This is going to be the application we will be using for this. Now you do need Windows to utilize this, but mind you, I'm just going to show you all right here. This is the text-based version of the tutorial. So this is going to show you in text, of course, how to do everything. So if there's something you don't completely understand from this video, you can easily check it out here. This does cover, of course, single and multi-disc games. And I'll show you how to synchronize and do everything on this. But if there's something you need a further explanation on, you can definitely read this short guide here. Now to get started, all you need to do is go to releases and find the latest version that you can download. So the latest version right now is 0.2.2 .2 that I can download at least. All you need to do is click the zip file to download this. Once you have it downloaded, you also need to find your flash drive, make sure it is plugged in, and there's two things you have to make sure are done to this. First of all, check the formatting and make sure it is formatted to FAT32. It has to be FAT32 or EXT4, but if you're on Windows, use FAT32. The second thing you need to do is you must rename this to Sony. All one word, all capital letters, just like that. It has to be a FAT32 formatted flash drive in this instance, and it has to be labeled Sony. Those two are important. Now at this point, once we have that done, all we need to do is take Bleem Sync and just extract it. Once you open it up, I'm going to explain these folders here. This is the payload folder. What this does is essentially to load the modification when you boot up your console with the flash drive. It's going to drop in this payload right here to load in the modifications. Bleem Sync is going to allow you to build everything needed, mainly a database for your console. Games is where you're going to put your games. And then LOL Hack, this is going to be the script which tells the payload essentially what to do and how to handle everything on your console. So in short, once you get everything up and running on your flash drive, this will essentially copy over what it needs to to the flash drive from your console. So you're making modifications and running everything off the flash drive as opposed to from your system itself. So in the end, if you ever want to remove the mod, all you need to do is turn off your system, unplug it, and remove the flash drive, and your system is unmodded at that point. But what you can do here is now get your games set up. So now there's two ways that we can take this. We can either have this folder be our working folder, so to speak, where you have a working folder on your computer where you build out everything, and then you copy and paste it to your flash drive, or you can copy paste all of these to your flash drive right now and work from there. Personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the working folder on my desktop because it's a lot faster to copy files to and from here since the flash drive is a bit slower, but I will show you how to sync that up as well. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to get your games. 
So to set up your games, you just need to go into the games directory and you're going to have some numbered directories. Now, this is going to be, again, when you pop this in, the only games that you can access are going to be the ones on your flash drive. So you won't be able to access any of the other 20 already on the system until you restart it without the flash drive. But either way in here, you just want to increment. So if you want to add five games, you're going to put a game in number one, a game in number two, and then you're going to create other folders. But I'm going to be showing you all how to do this here. So first for a single disc game, what you'll need to do is have your folder set up like this. So you'll go into games, one, game data, and then here, you're going to need your bin and queue file. This is supposed to be the format of the game itself. So you can't do it in ISO. It needs to be in a queue sheet. Nothing else really. You have to have it in bin queue format. You're going to need a PNG file. And that is important. You need to get the cover for the game in PNG. And everything has to match the actual working title right here, which that is essentially the unique ID of the game disc itself. You will also need a game INI and PCSX CFG file in each one of these. And I notice you don't need the lick file here, so we can actually get rid of that with no issue. But this is what you want to do in here. Any of the working files, you'll just want to delete these. So you only want game INI and PCSX config. So now you need to get your game. So out of my single disc games, you know what? Let's go ahead and grab Medieval. So this is how I have it set up. It is in bin Q format. And there's also a PNG file right here. Now to address this real quick, if you have your game in some other type of format, you need to convert it to bin Q. If it's in bin Q and you decide to rename it to something like this, you also need to make sure everything has to be the same name. And you have to make sure right here, I'll edit this, that in the Q sheet, if you rename this, that that file, the bin file it's pointing to is the same. It has to be matching. I cannot stress that enough. And to edit that, all you need to do is right click and you can open it with something such as Notepad. I use Notepad++, so I can link that in the description if you all are interested in that, but make sure everything is the same name on that. And for the PNG file, normally what I do is if you click right here, it's just the cover art. Admittedly, what I normally do is I find the cover art on Google. It normally comes in a JPEG. And for that, I just kind of open it with paint. And from here, I just go to file, save as PNG picture. And that's about it. So you have that saved. So once you have all of those done, you have bin, Q, and PNG files for your single disc based game. I'm just going to copy them into the working directory right here. Again, this needs to go into games, one, game data. And that's been copied. Now, once everything has been copied over, you also have to configure this. So you're going to need to go into game INI, and you can just right click and edit this in just regular notepad. And you need to get down all of the information here. So for this, I'm just going to highlight the file name, copy it, and paste right here. And since this is medieval, call this medieval. I believe the publisher for this is Sony Computer Entertainment. Came out in 1998 and it is one player. And once you have all that edited, you just have to hit save. Again, these IDs have to be the same across the board. But once you have all that, congratulations, you have your individual game INI, your config file, your bin, Q, and PNG files. So game number one is done. Now let's say we want to do a multi-disc game. So you can just go into number two, game data, and there's generally, you're probably going to see the same bin and Q and such files here. All we need to work with are the game INI and config files. So once you have only these two available, go ahead and find your game. So for this, I'm going to choose Resident Evil 2 because I already have this one set up. And these are the bin Q files for disk one. These are the bin Q files for disk two. And this is the PNG image. And the PNG, all you need to do is you just need to name it the same as disk one. And as long as you have that, 
you'll be fine. So again, once you have all that set up, right click and copy, and then you can paste them right here. Now to set this game I and I up, you just need to right click, edit, and then from here, you're going to have to name this properly. So take the first disc and make it the first ID right here. Now for the second disc, you need to grab the name and here immediately type a comma and then paste the second disc right there. So first disc comes first, second disc comes second, third disc comes third if you have that. From here, you just call it by the proper title. So for this, I'm going to call it Resident Evil 2. It has been published by Capcom. It's one player. And this also came out in 1998. And from here, you can save your changes and exit out of this. So let's say those are the only two games that I want on here. That's great. So those are the two games I have. Go back here. And from here, you can now build out your file and your database. So you need to go into BleemSync, go and find BleemSync.exe, and double click this. And that's it. It's very quick. So when you come back here, there's going to be a file called System. And inside a system, there's databases, and there's this regional DB. That is what it has generated, and that is going to be your game list that the system is going to read off. So now that you want to copy this over, if you're just copying this to your flash drive, you don't necessarily need the blame sync here, but you're going to need the other four folders. So you should have this folder right here, the games folder, lolhack, and system. All you need to do is copy these, go to your flash drive, and paste them to the root of your flash drive. All right, so once that's all said and done, all you need to do is go over to where your flash drive is, right click, eject it, and then take it out of your computer and go over to your PlayStation. Now, when you go over to your PlayStation, this is what you'll need to do to launch it. First of all, you need to turn off the console by pressing the power button and wait for the light to turn orange. Once it's turned orange, unplug it completely from power, plug in your flash drive, plug the console back into power, and wait for the orange lights to come on. Once the orange light comes on, you can press the power button to turn it on and wait a few seconds. If your flash drive works and everything is successful, your system should start flashing green and orange lights from that LED. And if it has, go ahead, pay attention to here and check this out. Now it looks like we've formatted our system and I'll explain what's going on here. We have to initialize this because essentially what this is doing is it is copying over all the system files or the necessary ones to your flash drive and you're essentially running a secondary version of the PlayStation Classic off your flash drive. Think of this as dual booting. So you have your onboard OS version of the PlayStation Classic, and on your flash drive, you have the secondary OS, and that's essentially the dual boot we're doing. But all you need to do is go over to English and take note that the accept and reject buttons have been flipped. So you now have to press circle for OK as opposed to X, but select your language, accept that, Wait for this, and once this all loads up, as you can see, our other 20 games are gone, but these are the two games that we have right here. So just to show you that they work, all you need to do is press circle on here, wait for it to launch. There we go, we have the bio screen, and let's wait a few more seconds for this. And there we go, that is officially medieval. Now, unfortunately, with this default configuration, we don't have any other shortcuts mapped to the controller or what have you, so we just have to use this normally, but I'm going to restart the console here, and check it out. Resume points work on this as well too, so this works just like the stock iteration of it. Let's go ahead and launch Resident Evil 2 as well. So I'm just going to press OK there. As you can see, it's showing this because this is a multi-disc game, and let's wait for this to launch. So we got our bio screen here, let's wait for this to play through, and as you can see Resident Evil 2. There were no other games on the PlayStation Classic stock that had that warning, so that's definitely nice to see. And all that will work on here, so we're good to go on this. 
fantastic. Now, just to warn you all, swapping discs is going to retain its normal functionality on the PlayStation Classic, meaning that you have to swap discs by pressing the eject button whenever it is available in the game itself when you're playing through it just by normal means. So wherever that's going to be on this. I haven't attempted that myself directly on here, unfortunately, but you just have to use the stock functionality as was intended. So let's go ahead and just kind of get in here, get into the safe spot. There we go. But as you can see, Resident Evil 2 seems to be working just fine. So I'm going to press the restart button here. And as you can see, we have a resume point. Fantastic. Now, I'm also going to be showing you all what you can do if you want to go back to any of the original 20 games. If you ever want to do that, you just have to turn off the console by pressing the power button. Once it goes orange, unplug it from your power, unplug the flash drive, plug your console back into power, and then once the orange light comes on, press the power button without the flash drive hooked up, and from there, just wait for it to boot up normally. Now, as you can see, we're back to our normal system with the original 20 games. So that's the only downside to using this Bleem Sync here. You can only, you, you can't add games to the existing 20. You can only play your added games or the original 20 games. You cannot do both at the same time. You can't have them in the carousel at the same time. The last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you all how you can add additional games to this. So we have two games currently on the flash drive. Let's go ahead and add a third one before we get off here. So with that, go ahead, go back over to your PC with your flash drive hooked up. So for our third game, let's grab Brave Fencer Musashi. So here again, you have the bin and Q files and the PNG file, which is going to be the cover art for this. Just go ahead, grab these and copy them. And I will be pasting them to our working directory. So this is the directory I have on my desktop here, but you need to go into games. And now that we're going to be building out a third one, you just need to create a new folder, call it three. You always want to increment with whatever you're doing here. Go into that create a new folder and call it game data just like that and it is case sensitive go into game data and paste your game files now once those have been pasted go back to any of your games game data grab the ini and cfg files copy these two go into your new game game data and paste them. So in here you should have your game bin q png files, the pcsx config file, and the game ini. So now all you need to do is edit your game ini accordingly. So for the discs you just need to take the q sheet name, copy that, and paste it out here. For the title of course you need to put the game title. For the publisher you know what I'm going to go original call this squaresoft because that's what it was published as one player, and 1998. So now with all that being synced up, all you need to do is save it and exit out of this file, and that is done. But you also have to update the database. So to do that, you need to go over back to the root folder, enter BleemSync, find BleemSync EXE, and double click it. Now what that's done is it has updated the database with the new game. So anytime you add, remove, or modify the games on here, you have to rerun that BleemSync EXE. You have to every single time. So for this, if you want to copy something over, this is what you can do. All you need to do is go into your system, databases, copy the regional DB, and on your flash drive, go to system, databases and paste regional db right here as such and replace it for the games you just need to go to where your games are so mine is three copy that go over to your games on your flash drive and paste it right here now once everything's copied over just go to where your flash drive is of course eject it properly and you can now take the flash drive out of your computer and move over to your playstation again when you're at the playstation first turn it off make sure the light goes orange unplug your system from power plug the flash drive in 
plug your console back into the power and wait for the power lights to come on. Once it comes on, you can turn the system on and wait a few seconds. And again, the light should start flashing if it picks up your flash drive properly. And as you can see here, we now have three games. So we have Medieval, Resident Evil 2, and our third game, Brave Fencer Musashi. So check this out as well. The resume points work on all these. So if I press enter right here, that works on Medieval. I'm going to restart the system. No, I don't want to do that. Let's go over to Resident Evil 2, load up the resume point on here. As you can see, that works as well. I'm going to restart that. And finally, let's try out our new game, Brave Fencer Musashi. So it shows up just fine. I'm going to enter it here. And as you can see, it's booting up. So that's about it that you have to do with the PlayStation Classic. Now, again, this is a so-called, I guess you could say a dual boot modification for the system, which is pretty nice because essentially what Bleem Sync does is it builds out a database for your games, but then it is also designed to run everything redirected and directly off of the flash drive. So if you ever want to remove this and unmod your system, so to speak, you just restart without the flash drive. If you ever want to play any of your added games, all you need to do is restart your system with the flash drive plugged in. Remember that every time you make changes, add or remove your games, you do have to run Bleem Sync and you have to make sure everything is synchronized on that. Now that's about it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed this, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But let me know if you have a PlayStation Classic, if you've tried any of these modifications on here, if you are going to try any of them, and what your thoughts are on this. This tutorial seems to cover this pretty well, I would say. But I would like to remake this tutorial at one point when there's some more refined tools, such as a hack cheat type solution for the PlayStation Classic. So don't be surprised in, let's say, the next coming months or so, I'm going to be watching this, but don't be surprised if I decide to remake another tutorial covering this. But so far, it seems like the community is going to be going forward with using Bleem Sync as opposed to GPG Hacks, so this would be the recommended method of doing everything. Again, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. Enjoy your PlayStation Classic with a few new games.